Hi everyone, welcome to Force Conversation, the new weekly show where two scruffy looking nerf herders like to talk about Star Wars. My name's Jay Tank. And I'm Colin Coftree. Thank welcome you for us. to Force Conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So Colin, how are you doing? I'm really good. Excellent. I'm the force is strong, Jay. Excellent. So what have we got this week in our first episode? Well, uh, the first key story is obviously Rogue One tickets on sale in the UK. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You got yours? I got mine, mate. Got mine at um, half half an hour after midnight. Uh, Odeon Cinema, IMAX 3D. Excellent. Super excited. Excellent. Yep, I got mine as well. I've got three screenings. I've got the midnight screening, and I've got another one at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and another one at 8 p.m. So, uh, yep, three times on day one. I cannot wait. That and, uh, is dedication to a hokey old religion, if ever I've heard it. Definitely. But um, I must say, I was about to go Kylo Ren that night because I was trying to get those tickets, and it got to 40 minutes past midnight, and uh, Cineworld, they still hadn't put them online. Few hadn't put them online. Odeon was there for 20 minutes before. So, uh, yeah, I, I was starting to lose my... Uh, lose yeah, my, I, I was going dark that. side. It, it was a stressful half an hour or so for me. I, I really oh. wanted to go to the City World uh, 4DX showing, uh, but I was just waiting and waiting for these for the, for the listings to, to show up on the website. It just wasn't happening. Oh, and yeah. So in, in the end, I just had to go with the Odeon 3D IMAX, which I was a bit glad about, but I had to get the midnight showing because I got, had to go to work the next day. So, <laughs> so, so I, you've got to see it as soon as it comes out, right? Well, yeah, exactly. You well, you, you would spoil it for me otherwise. I'm I, sure. I would never spoil it for you. I would never spoil it. <laughs> but if I couldn't go to midnight, I think I would have started crying. In fact, after all the hassle of trying to get the tickets, I still couldn't sleep. Like, I went to bed <laughs> afterwards and I didn't sleep all night because it was just going around my head. I got myself so worked up that I was just lying there. I was just like, I had my eyes shut. I'm like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sleeping. What's going on? And it just went on all night until I had to get up for work. So I wasn't best pleased, let me just tell you. <laughs> well, I, I was mega annoyed because I had to be up at half four the next day. And uh, I woke up and the tickets for the 14 <laughs> um <laughs> Showing was was available when I woke up at past four. I was like, oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got them. That's the main thing. Um, so, yes. You know, yes, yes, yes. See it. And in three weeks' time, we will watch the original trilogy very slightly differently because we all have an idea about what's going to happen or what happened. We've always had the idea because you see it in the mm. opening scroll. But now we're going to know. Now we're going to see exactly what happened, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll so, tell you what, I'm, I've just read Catalyst. Oh, you, you read finished Catalyst? It? You finished yeah, it now? finished it, yeah. Um, I am eight chapters in. Ah, I'll tell you so. what, it's brilliant. Brilliant, and, and I'm so glad I read it. I don't think you need to read it, you know, before. This. I don't think it's going to ruin the film for you. Mm -hmm. But I think if you've actually read it, then you'll get a much deeper understanding of who, of, of the motivations between um, the main characters, absolutely. You're going to really understand the, where they're coming from. Just the scope and scale of how long it actually took to build the Death Star. I mean, yeah. I, I did have my head scratching why it took 20 years to build it, but <laughs> the, the, the book really sort of goes through those steps. And, Do you uh, feel I, I it, explains really it. it explains it in yeah. a way that makes you feel like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. It would take that long. Absolutely. And... Oh, I, you know, I don't want to do a spoiler it, for it. We don't want to yeah. spoil anything for, for people watching that haven't seen it, so that's mm. fine. But, I mean, you know, where I'm at, it, it's an interesting story so far, and it's quite cool getting to learn about the characters, and, you know, this isn't giving any spoilers away, but, you know, it starts years and years back during the In Clone the Clone Wars, Wars so, you which know, was a surprise to me. I didn't think yeah. it was going to, yeah. And so these characters were around at that time. Um, so, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, you know, I'm a really slow reader. Um, mm. But I've got it on Audible, and I, I'm a really slow listener as well. <laughs> <Somehow>. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like, listen to it on slow? Uh, in slow motion, no. <laughs> but, you know, if I'm reading it on my own, I'm compelled to do all the voices while I'm reading it, right? So it just <laughs> takes ages. And the book's fat. 
Um, it is, yeah. Um, it's a big book. Yeah, so I've been I've been putting it on, you know, as I go to bed, I stick the headphones on, listen to a chapter, and then I'll switch it off and go to sleep. And yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far, but I mean, yeah, I haven't got through it yet. And I'm like that with a lot of the current books. I'm kind of like halfway through a couple of them. And then, oh, a new so... one, and then a new one comes out, I'm like, oh, well, I better start reading that one as well. And then I'm like, oh, I haven't finished that one yet, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're going off topic, but, I mean, have you read in all the new canon books, then? Are you reading them? Um, I'm reading uh, I'm reading some of them, not all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones that I've, I've got sitting here, which I started, uh, like, literally just started, is Lost Stars. I haven't oh, finished right, that yeah. one I've yet. got that to um, read, yeah. I, I read the first few um, when they came out. So, you know, Tarkin, what have we got there? Tarkin and... Um, the, new yeah, this, the Lords of Sith, did Lords you read that Sith. one? I think I, good. I've got like a couple of chapters left on that one, but it's, it's all the way through. And then I put it down, then I start a new one because I do stupid things like that. But yeah, um, yeah I, I, start, I I read those um, and then, you know, so many started coming out. And, and mm. that's the thing that gets me because I'm like, as I said, I'm a really slow reader. So I start reading it and I'm like, yeah, I've got time. And then it's like, oh, this new one's come out. I'm like, oh man, I've got to buy that. And then another one comes out and I'm like, oh, by the way, there's three other like young reader ones coming out. Yeah. Which might be worth reading. And, it's, you know, the one that I wasn't liking was, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's the one with Luke Skywalker. It's oh, a, Hair it's to a, the Jedi. Hair to the Jedi, yeah. Hair to the Jedi. Um, that one was kind of boring. Um, I, read, I listened to that one as an audio book, and I found it really good. Uh, Mark Thompson does the um, the, the narrating, and mm-hmm. he 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 did a lot of the Legends Star Wars books, and he just does really great voices. I thought he brought a real sense of Luke Skywalker to the to the reading. So I mean, right. I don't know if that's a different experience than uh, listen, reading the book, but I really enjoyed listening to it. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe I should give the audiobook a go. I mean, at the end of the day, these are the canon ones, so I am very much more interested in all the canon mm. ones, as, as we were talking off camera before, but you yeah. know, I was saying about the uh, the EU ones, I read some of those that were, you know, they're good stories. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah, it's the Empire, and I like the short books, like the Tales from Jabba's Cantina and um, Tales from Osiris' Cantina and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Um but I didn't read all of those, and it was kind of like, well, they're not actually canon, so, meh. Yeah. You know? I've got to say, the best book out of the new canons, the ones I've enjoyed the most, was actually the book about um, Ventress from the Clone Wars. Ah, I have Dark, I Dark read Disciple. It yeah, I have it. Fantastic. And it, a brilliant, um, I won't say exactly what happens, but it, it tells her story, and... It's a brilliant ending to our story because I guess we're not get any other I really about. liked. I really liked yeah. Sash Ventress as a character, and so much more to her as well than what you you get just from watching the Clone Wars. Mm. So, because uh, she was on the original Clone Wars cartoon, wasn't she? Oh yeah, on the, the old Samurai Jack one, yeah. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know what, yeah, what so... the artist is, but it's Samurai Jack. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so. This is again going slightly off topic, but it was actually something I was going to ask you because I I watched Clone Wars, right? And yeah. Uh, both versions? Or... Yeah, yeah, both versions. But I, I wasn't a huge fan. Like Clone Wars for me, when it was good, it could be really good. And we're talking like the, the you know the the new canon one, not the old one. Um, it could be really good, but there were so many episodes that were just so boring. And, yeah. And okay. I used to force myself to watch it. And the problem for me is. And this is just me. You know, obviously, I grew up with the original trilogy, you know, from the time I was little. Um, and um, I, I care less about the uh, the prequel characters. Not because I dislike the prequels. You know, yeah. I, I, I like the prequels for what they are. Like, they're mm. good stories and they are part of the canon. If I had to choose what I was going to put on, I'd put on the original trilogy. But with the Clone Wars cartoon, it was always a bit like, all right, let's watch some more of this. I, I think I think with the Clone Wars cartoon, I think there was more good episodes than there were bad. And I think the episodes that were strongest were ones that actually were about the Clone Wars, were about the, the uh, Clone Wars fighting mm-hmm. and the different yeah. battles, and the ones that actually carried... Uh, the ongoing the story, story arc of across course. Ahsoka was probably one of the most interesting mm. new characters oh, I think I hate in the last <laughs> see, see exact opposite I think she's really interesting I, I like think, her more in Rebels 
Oh, I absolutely. didn't like her as a kid. But I was like, eh. the thing is, just the, the one thing that kept me going throughout the whole of Clone Wars was what happens to Ahsoka. That was the biggest question in my mind. What? Where? Where does this character I go? I wanted so... um, Anakin to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that Anakin like just kills her at some point. I, I I hated her. I hated her. And it was only like once she came into Rebels, and and I was like. Oh God! Here she is again, and then it was like, oh, actually, yeah, she's quite cool now. I like yeah. her in well, the new I... in the new Rebel stories, but in the old Clone Wars ones, I was just like, oh my God, please, somebody kill her! You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, when she was, I mean, obviously, over the Clone Wars cartoon, you see her grow up, and I think I can't remember what series it is. I think it's about series four. She was better. They, they change the, the designs, don't they? Make yeah. her look a bit older, and and she definitely came into her own now. I think, um, but no, I, I, I well, again. It, not surprisingly, the Clone Wars, the, the the more rubbish episodes were the more kid ones. Like there was some, a couple of episodes like towards on the last the Lost series, or whatever it was called, the last series, and you had that core storyline about the clones sort of starting to realise they had something in their head, and a couple of them were trying to cut it out, that kind of stuff. Mm. But then that was intercut with some really rubbish episodes with some droids doing some rubbish oh, things, oh, trying to oh escape God, a yeah. ship. And it's just like, <laughs> okay. just tell the core story, man. But there is a, another <laughs> order that you can that you should watch them in, isn't there? Because the Clone Wars wasn't actually shown in the correct order. So yes. you know about this? Yeah. So there is another order to watch them. Look it up online, but you you will watch it differently if you watch it. I tell you what, the I other thing, ordered, but you know, <laughs> talking about order now, I can't remember what it's called. What's the, the order thing with machete, the different films? The machete order. The machete thing? order, dude. Um, yeah, off the top of my What's head, your I can't view on that? I haven't watched them in that order. Like I've I not have. Bothered. I watched have them you? before um, Force Awakens comes out and because in that order. Yeah, and it's and... brilliant because you treat. Um, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clone. No, you no, dropped you Phantom Menace. You dropped you Phantom, Phantom Menace. Menace. That's so it. Two, and you, so three. you watch. Is that right? No, you watch. No, you watch four, five, four, five. Then you go two, back to two, three, three, and then you watch six. six. Yeah. And you and so two and three are almost like a flashback. Once you get the big reveal of Darth Vader being spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Luke's dad in. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Sorry, dude. Sorry, it dude. Is Luke's dad. Yeah, when did yeah. this come out? It's Jay. It's the Midichlorians. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, so, so I was just about to reenact that, that classic thing. episode of Robot Chicken. Then when they, when they just list all of the improbable things. <laughs> so, so you liked it in that order in the in the machine? Yeah, order. it was good. It worked. And to be yeah. fair, I did watch the Phantom Menace as well because I. I wanted to watch them all, but then I Darth Maul, immediately right? regretted it after watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Darth Maul bit's brilliant, but the bit no, that really the got me bit. was the when um, Liam Neeson grabs Jar Jar's tongue oh. when they're all in the. Oh, <laughs> you know what? You know what kind of pisses me off though on the Phantom Menace, right? Is there's that bit? Um, it's where Maul attacks them in the desert, right? Oh yeah. And Qui Gon jumps off. That bit was cool. Yeah, it's a cool piece, right? But in the book. Maul yes. jumps up it's on even the platform, cooler. right? And he gets kicked off. In the movie, Maul's getting up off the ground. So, wait, whoa, why didn't you put that bit in? Because it makes more sense. And that just upset me. <laughs> anyway, dude. So, dude, we have gone massively yes. off topic here. What, what's the next topic? Let's, let's the get next back topic. on track. Well, what about... Um, Amelia Clark's casting in the new Han Solo movie. What do you think of that, buddy? Right, so Amelia Clark, Daenerys from Game of Thrones. Mother of Dragons. Mm-hmm. Yep, Breaker of Chains. Yeah, um, yeah look. The, Show the off thing... Bush. <laughs> Very, yeah, she does that a lot, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the thing with Amelia Clark, okay, cool, they've cast her in it. Um, she's good as Daenerys, right? We we will watch very good, we all like amazing. Daenerys. Yep, she gets naked a lot. We like that. Um, but in other roles, um, and it's not necessarily her fault, but you've not seen her be amazing in other roles, right? Um, she she's probably very capable of um, acting the part. Depends on what they give her. Sometimes she's a bit too eyebrowy, you know, like she's always like moving her eyebrows around, and it's like, dude, like tone it down a little bit. Um, but yeah. Let, you know, let's see. She's 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 nice to look at. She's good in Game of Thrones. Maybe she can do something good in this movie. Um, they, what did you they, think of her in Terminator as Sarah Connor? Uh, well, I I 
don't mind that movie as much as some people really hate it. I particularly love the beginning bit, you know, where they go back mm. to. No, I like the film. Yeah, um, I like it. But yeah, she was all right. I mean, she wasn't Sarah Connor, though, was she? Sarah to Connor. me, and, she, wasn't, know, she wasn't. She wasn't tough Hedy. enough. Lena Headey yeah. was amazing. Yeah, she was in the te- Chronicles, right? How come we've got two Sarah Connors in one program? It's crazy. I reckon. Yeah. Uh, what's her face? She's getting it. Linda Hamilton. Let's get her in Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. She can be happen. grandmother of dragons. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, in, in the new Han Solo one, um, they have the, uh, the Creed star, Tessa Thompson, um, Zoe Kravitz and Naomi Scott were all up for a role as a female mm. lead. Now, people are going, oh, is Emilia Clark replacing them or is it going to be a different role? Well, you know, I do believe that, you know, there's more than one woman in a, in a Han Solo movie because he does like the women. Um, and uh yeah, you know, let's wait and see. She's she's an actress. She could probably do the part, and uh, it's it's not like exciting, but it's not horrible. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm indifferent, but cool. They've cast someone nice. We've got more people in Han Solo. Yeah, I think she's completely capable of being good. I think it all comes down to script and direction. So yes, yeah. So I reckon so long as she is given a decent script. And some good direction. I think she'll be absolutely fine. So I'm, I'm not bothered. I think she'll be good. Yeah, she, you know, she's a capable actress, and she just needs to have the right role. Daenerys works for her, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's see what happens. All have right. you got any idea about who she's going to play? I don't. What was your guess? I don't. Um. I, I, ha- I have no idea because this no. is, you know, in Han Solo's past, it could be someone that they take from the expanded universe because they are. You know, going to be taking mm. characters from there. Um, I do think that if they get um, Tessa Thompson or Zoe Kravitz, they're going to play. Um, well, they're not necessarily going to play, but you know, in the Han Solo comic, um, he mm-hmm. had the I can't remember her name. Yeah, is, the, the, the love like, interest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what the name is. Yeah. There's a, a good chance that they'll have them play that character. You know, um, and also we get Lando Calrissian, Donald Glover, which I'd like... I think he'll be brilliant. Yeah, he will be brilliant. What I would like to see Amelia Clark as is lumpy Chewbacca's relation <laughs> in full Chewbacca costume. That, but if yes. they actually get her and just completely cover her in Chewbacca amazing, costume. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Right, let's go on to the next bit of news, Jay. Yeah. Um, there's one bit of news is obviously, and this I think this was even talked about back at um, Celebration Europe. <laughs> They're not going to have a crawl on Rogue One. Mm-hmm. So what's your thoughts on that? How do I feel about it? Yeah. Um, I'm probably one of the few people that's like, cool. Because <laughs> <laughs> most people are like, oh, you can't have Star Wars without a crawl. Well, look, you have the saga movies. And we're getting, you know, uh, a anthology. Because they're anthologies, mm-hmm. not Star Wars, sorry, they're anthologies. We're getting an anthology <laughs> movie every other Snob. year. <laughs> so, okay, the saga ones, you've got that, that crawl. Um, the anthology ones, they will find a way to do something. Well, I think that they're, gonna, they're not going to have, like, starring, blah, 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 at the beginning. Hey, it's Boba Fett. Um, no, they're going to have, you know, probably a long time ago, and Galaxy's far, far away. And I think on this one, what will probably happen is it will come up, you know, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and then, like, just go straight into the action. I reckon that's how they're going to do this. However, there was a really cool... From really? Celebration, did you see it when they did the um, when they showed the the scroll of for Episode New Hope? Four? Yeah. yeah, and then it just and that goes was amazing. Up. That oh, is what they should because just because obviously I was there at Celebration, Jay. Yeah. No, you weren't. Yeah, I was on my honeymoon. Yeah, <laughs> they 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 booked it in for the time I went on my honeymoon. But I mean, that was an amazing moment when because you didn't know what was going to happen, and so, so the Star Wars fan there comes up, yeah. the New Hope. Um, scroll starts coming, you're thinking, what's going on? When it just, like, record scratches and, <sighs> like, the picture yeah. dissolves. And but then it tilts it, up, Just right? when it gets to Rebel Spies. Yeah. And it, are oh, amazing. Yeah, so, I, and I'd love that, so that to happen in the film. I think that would be a brilliant should. start. That would be it would make people start. understand what's going on. There's a lot Definitely. of stuff on the internet saying, oh, people get confused about wh- wh- where this film fits <sighs> in and expect Ray to pop up this. and all this malarkey. But, okay. We're Star Wars fans, so we all know what's going on. We are Star Wars fans. Too. I've heard. Yeah. Um, uh, apparently, you know, Joe Schmo down the road, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. He's like, why is Darth Vader? I thought he's dead. Look, uh, maybe that is the case. 
but if it is, that would be a perfect way to explain it, to do the episode four scroll, gets to I that so. point of it, and it just tilts up and fades away straight into the movie. Just like actually fades into Rogue One yeah. and then goes into it. That would be awesome. The only thing Will I do think do would be jarring, if I could just going to keep a long time ago, blah, 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 I, can't, I can't believe I don't even know what that is. What In the loser. galaxy. Oh, but away. yeah. Um, and then the Star Wars. Boom. If they're going to keep that, then go to some kind of rogue. It's going to be weird, isn't music. it? I don't think they're going to have the music. I think that the music that they use, either this is going to start out, like I said, with um, the Rogue One um are uh, you frozen again, dude? Um, the Rogue One, um, Cyan and Stray into the action. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if not, I think they'll do something like the Rebels music. They've got dun, 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 and then go into it. You know, it would be something like that. You may notice that Colin has changed position. That's first episode technical difficulties. Now oh, we're yeah. doing a Lobot impression. <laughs> As always. <laughs> Okay, um, what were we saying, Jay, before that? Um, um, we were just saying about the opening crawl. Oh, yeah. Rogue One and how, so I, I think that they'll probably just do a little bit of music and go into it. I, I don't think that, um, that, it's gonna, that they'll do the episode four thing. As much as that would be cool, I don't see them doing it in the cinema. Um, they'll just, I think it'll be something short, straight into the action, make you forget that there's no crawl and, yeah. and just get straight into it. What about just you? Get on. Yeah, I reckon, they're just gonna get, I reckon they are just going to get on with it and... It don't bother me. No, I'm cool. <laughs> really, okay, that's, that's really interesting because so many people are pissed off about this. So many people are like, oh my God, oh, you can't have Star Wars Dance Crawl. like, well, hey, it's, it's not a saga movie. You so... just say, if it, if it was a saga movie, I'd feel completely different. Totally. But, yeah. um, but... I found quite a number of films that are either in cinemas or coming out soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're having technical difficulties. As you can <laughs> tell, we're real professionals. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's move on to our next topic, Jay. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of speculation following a recent interview um, in uh, Variety magazine, I believe, around what's going to happen beyond episode nine. Have you read, read those articles, yes, Jay? Yes, the, the interview with Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, that's the one. And it was uh, about, well, the, the, the specific um, thing that we're talking about here is uh, the possibility of the end of the Skywalker saga. Um, I, you know what, it, it's one of those things, <sighs> would they just, are they just going to go on forever? You know, the the talk was... Will the Skywalker saga end, and then will it just be standalone movies from that point onwards? Um, I doubt that it would just be standalone movies, because you'd get something like an Obi-Wan trilogy or something like that, right? Not necessarily that, but you might get Knights of the Old Republic or, you know, something along those lines. So you might get, at some point, a new set of movies, and they might change it from the um, Skywalker story to something else. Because, you know, with this, how far are they going to go? You know, I, I can't. I can't really see it going on and on and on. You'll get to the end of episode nine, and depending on how they leave it there, um, they're either going to say, "Right, that's it. The story is complete," because it is meant to be a self-contained story, right? Mm. Um, but you know, then you'll get the same as what we've got now. Every other year, you've got your little um, anthology movie, and then um, they might go, "Hey, uh, there's a Knights of the Old Republic um, trilogy coming, or something like that," and you know. The, the uh, Knights of the Old Republic is something that fans have wanted for a long time. People mm -hmm. really want that. I, I think it would be quite cool to see a Game of Thrones type of TV series done like that because, you know, Disney have got the money. It's not like they can't put funding into doing a really, really good TV show. Um, and that would be great because people could follow that along. But um, I'd love to see it somewhere on Netflix. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, well, that would be prime place. It. Yeah, exactly. Disney yeah, I mean, at buying Netflix, so... It could happen, and then you get all the Star Wars movies on there as well, and all the Marvel movies. So, um, and then a Star Wars Marvel crossover. That should never the galaxy. ever ever happen. Never. No. No. <laughs> that that. Star Lord happen. and Han Solo. No. Uh. -uh. Nope. No. Nope. Not happening. Not ever. No. <laughs> I do not want to see that. That that would really really piss me off if that happened. Just no, that can't happen. <laughs> Why? I just think 
I'd love to see Vader versus Doctor Doom. That would be cool. Yeah, well, watch those, um, the, uh, uh, what are they called? The bat, um, superhero beatdown, uh, oh, bat yeah, in the yeah. sun. You can have a Darth Vader, Doctor Doom, bat in the sun. Awesome. The, I mean, the Darth Vader versus Batman was awesome. That was great. They did yeah, two different cool. endings. Really liked yeah. that. Let's go with that one. But in the actual movie verse, hell no. No. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I can see where you're going with that. Um, yeah, my, I'm going with my, my, yeah. Okay. My my view on the um, whole what happens after episode nine, I'm sort of torn. Really. I, I, to be honest, I don't want Star Wars fatigue. I'm really concerned about every year Star Wars film coming out. It's just going to detract from what made them so great. To be honest the anticipation was one of the biggest things about it. And, mm. you know, particularly when we were kids and, you know, waiting for the Star Wars films to come out on video. Do you know what I mean? That was oh, yeah. like millions of years. And, yeah. and so, you know, we're mega spoiled at the moment. So, one, I don't want, you know, saturation. But two, um, I also think, I mean, I said I loved the Legends books. I loved all the way from... The Fawn trilogy, all the way to the most recent Fate of the Jedi storylines, where you see, you know, over 30, 40 years, the evolution of the Skywalker family and the Solo family, and, mm -hmm. you know, all the different iterations from Jaina and Jaina and Jason and Ben Skywalker and all that kind of thing. So I think there's plenty of mileage, you know, if they go down that route, obviously with the new cast, you know, evolve it. You know, I'm not expecting them to keep dragging out um, Anthony Daniels every, <laughs> every year. <laughs> I think I'll probably have enough of him, but... Um, but do you think they'll do that? Do you think they'll keep on adding, like, a new Skywalker child to it and, and just keep on doing well, more yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I think they can do a saga with the course core characters that come from the saga storyline. I don't think it necessarily needs to be a Skywalker. I mean, I don't think the Star Wars saga is, is completely reliant on a Skywalker <laughs> family being in it. I mean, we, we have no idea. I mean, we'll talk about theories later, but we've no idea who Ray is and whether she's got yeah. any family down or anything like that. But I do. I'm not bothered. I, I, and also, I think it'll become, again, going back to that robot chicken skit when, you know, it's, it's improbable. <laughs> There's only so many people that can be related, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, but you can still have a core Star Wars saga movie that tells the story, that and moves the story you along. You want the universe to get bigger rather than it's always people yeah. that know each other or somehow are connected but the, to but each other. But that's the amazing yeah. thing about these, these one-off stories, isn't it? Because can you can go anywhere, anytime in the entire Star Wars mm -hmm. canon galaxy universe. You know, whatever you have, you want to frame it. So, as you said, I mean, I'd love to see um, something about the Old Republic because it's an area I don't really know that much about. It's the one sort of main gap in my Star Wars knowledge. I've not really ever gone down that route. Um, so, I'd love to. I've read a few of the Tales of the Jedi comics from Dark Horse, but apart from that, I've not really seen any. But I love the um, trailers for the Bioware games. Great, I mean, that makes, oh, no, yeah, I don't yeah. need to play the game because those trailers. I watched full CG movies of that. Yeah, totally. yeah, right, absolutely, and that, and like you, you know, you said earlier, I love to see TV series. You know, they they were going to do the one set in the underworld yeah. of Coruscant, weren't yeah. they, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, anyway, you know, change it up. Doesn't always need to be a film. I mean, there's there's always there's never going to be no Star Wars. We know that. Let's face it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like the the fact that we live in a time where we are now getting start. I mean, because as you said, like when we were kids, we would wait years for another movie, and now the gap it's actually... between Jedi and oh. and those Fawn books yeah. alone, yeah. you know, that was the dark times. That's when I sold all my Star Wars stuff. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I sold it to get comics. What a loser! <laughs> all my toys went. Oh, dude, they, no, <laughs> they were they were the dark ages. You know. Um, when, uh, you know, it's all hokey old religions and, you know, sorcerous but, ways. But, you know, but, um, something you said there um, about Star Wars fatigue, and it's very possible if you consider that, like, OK, Disney now own Marvel Studios, right? Mm -hmm. um, and now, what, you get three Marvel movies a year? Is that right? Three? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. right, 
So it's very possible that you could be looking at Star Wars movies make money. It's all about money. Whatever happens, the most mm. important thing is, do they make money? Yes, they do, right? So if one movie makes money a year, well, how much would two movies make a year, right? It's very possible that you could be looking at after episode nine, we can start getting two movies a year. Because let's say that is the end of like the, the main saga story. Well, they want to get... They want to do a couple of stories. Well, let's say we go with... Um, let's say we go with Obi-Wan and let's say they do an Obi-Wan trilogy. Mm. They all want to use the actors sooner rather than later. They want to... Yeah, get before old, they die and get old. Right? So... Um, or, or anything like that. They'll want to try and fit them in and be like, okay, well, if we do that story, we can, like, space that out and then fit another one in as well. So you could be mm-hmm. looking at getting the original May slot, which was what they were originally doing, they have May and December. You could look at that actually becoming a thing where you'll have a movie in May and then a Christmas movie. I've got to admit, I love having a Star Wars film out at Christmas every year. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's like the a best timing. Yeah, it's it is. It's, right? I, I don't need an advent calendar. I have my Star Wars calendar <laughs> now. You know, <laughs> it's, it's more exciting to count down to, to a Star Wars film. The, the one thing that I hate about it is the stress when I need to get tickets. <laughs> But I love it. I love getting a Christmas present of a nice new Star Wars movie. I mean, I'm actually... With with Episode 7, I was so excited because it's the first new Star Wars movie in, you know, in ages. It was like 15 years or something like that. Yeah. And But to be honest, with from a story point of view, I feel like I'm more excited about Rogue One because Rogue One is going back to my childhood Star Wars, the you know, the original Stormtroopers, Darth Vader and that original story. And I feel a bit more excited about this film than I was with episode seven. Like, you know, I prefer the the look of the older characters compared to the iPhone Stormtroopers and stuff like that. Um but yeah, this one I'm I'm like really excited for. I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's not long now. to be honest, I, I I still think I was more excited about Force Awakens, but I think it was just see just the fact that we were going to see these characters that again we haven't seen in the films for thirty mm. years, and to me that's that's what made it amazing was, and I think that's again that's something that I think will be lost if they do do too many films in the yeah. saga, you know, without a, a decent gap. It'll be it was that it was that need yeah. to see it, you know. Yeah. And and also allow some progression to happen because there's always going to be the comics, there's always going to be the books as well. So when they're not making films, they can fill the gaps. You know, they can still make some money. <laughs> oh, and, and they do, and they do. Yeah. I mean, and they those will. comics, those comics, man. You know, um, as I was saying to you earlier on, um, I've recently just stopped my subscription because it was getting to the point where I was buying all of them, and then a new one comes out, and then another new one, and another new one, and I'm like, come on, dude! Like, I know, like. You did did you complete um, the Vader run, though? <laughs> yeah, Darth I completed Vader. the day. The Darth I mean, Vader that was yeah. amazing. I mean, that was bravo. I mean, that was an amazing storyline. Annoyingly, like, you know, while I was getting those, I was getting everything sent to me. Um, so, you know, I've got things like some of the Poe Dameron ones and some of the Han Solo ones. And, and you know what I mean? And it's just like, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. Like, I've got to stop because otherwise this will just go on forever. Yeah. And that was just getting too painful for me. And also, again, being a slow reader, I'm behind. So I still haven't even caught up on them all. So I'm like, I've got to read these. You need a commute like mine, mate. You're you never know behind with a commute like mine. Dude, when I used, to, <laughs> I used to work in London, and I read so much because of sitting on the tube. I used to sit there, and I'd just read tons of stuff. Nowadays, I just try and fit it in like when I can, and I just don't do that very well. <laughs> I feel your pain, man. I feel your pain. Yeah, it's kind of painful. Yeah. Okay. So right. we are we finished with the news? You, you newsed I think we're out now. Done now? With the news. Um, yeah. So what did we do? We had uh, Emilia Clark. We had the crawl, and we've done the following on from the saga. Yeah. Rogue One tickets. Rogue no, One I tickets. We covered that the big the most ones. Important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We covered the big. Well, <laughs> I'd like to go to a, a new segment. Oh, it's all new. It's all this, new. Uh, <laughs> this segment. Um, Theory of the week. Now, obviously, hopefully, we're going to get some feedback anyway uh, from this video, and I would more than welcome uh, anyone who'd like to give us some names for these segments because theory of the week isn't 
exactly the most exciting one. But um, I think each week maybe we could look at a theory that you've seen on YouTube or something and maybe see what we think on it. Would you have, are you up for that, Jay? That sounds awesome. Okay, well, the, the main fit, the theory that I like the look of at the moment, and uh, particularly is present in my mind because I just recently got the uh, Force Awakens uh, 3D box set. Excellent. Uh, is Finn, and whether or not he is Force sensitive. Now, I've seen a couple of YouTube videos on this. Uh, I'll give some <coughs> shout outs to the guys. Uh, the uh, Stupendous Wave and Vincent Van Vendetta both done some really interesting um, YouTube videos based we can on, add the on links this at the bottom of this video. We will so certainly add those them. links. Um, and there's a, a particularly Vincent uh, video is about 13 minutes long. Lots of different reasons why mm. he thinks uh, Finn might be force sensitive. There's uh, some something to do with the numbers in his name, linking to some theory that George Lucas mm -hmm. might have read once when he was 12 or something. And then <coughs> that's the one bad boy, and that's the one. Um, there's stuff about his training and how easy he is about using the lightsabers. But the, the, the <coughs> one thing that really made me think there's something in this, and again, it was me re-watching it with the um, 3D Force Awakened Blu-ray the other day, is when... Um, the Starkiller base shoots its weapon. Um, Finn's about to get on that cargo ship. Here's the screaming of the planets being destroyed before the um, weapon hits the planets. And actually, that's what makes him turn around, hearing the screaming rather than seeing it. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that was completely reminiscent of how Obi-Wan Obi felt when Alderaan was destroyed. And obviously us hearing the scream, there's got to be something to that. What do you think? Yeah, I think that um, with these kind of things, they put these little nuggets in there for you, don't they? They hide them in there. And it, look, it's quite likely that Finn is going to be at least force sensitive. Will he become a Jedi? That's a different yeah, story. Sure. But I think he'll probably be force sensitive. They've certainly um, made a point of always showing him with a lightsaber. Um, and you know, but was those, that just those, those videos as well. the promotion of Force Awakens and well, throwing us off the scent of uh, Ray being the, the. Well, they, the thing is, in the uh, in the videos that you mentioned there, um, mm. they did actually point something out. Um, and as I watched it, because before that, I I kind of didn't want him to have the Force. Right. Mm. I wanted him to just be like an ex-stormtrooper and put together a little squad here and you're going to have Ray who's got the force and then he's just like a dude who's you know good with a gun because he can actually hit things. Um, but, um, you know, you see the bit with Maz Kanada where she purposely gives him the lightsaber and, he, mm. and then the little pointing out that they did where he specifically throws down his gun and goes for the lightsaber. He always chooses the lightsaber. It's all like, almost like it talks to him. You know, it's uh, Anakin and Luke's um, lightsaber, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that it's quite likely that he is going to be Force-sensitive. And it's possible, because Maz Kanada is obviously going to be in Episode 8, and it's quite likely that she will start teaching. She, she could sense fear in him. You know, when she first met him, she, she looked at him and was like... I can see in your eyes, you're, you're scared, you want to run. Um, I think that there was some connection. She knows the Force. They, they made that clear, and she went straight to Finn with that. Um, I think, uh, you know, it could be the case that she's going to, um, Ray's going to go off, be trained by Luke. Finn's going to be some, at least somewhere else, and he's still recovering. So at some point, I'm guessing he's going to run into Maz or someone like that. Um, yeah, it, it could be cool. You know, he's he's definitely getting fitter as well. If you see John Boyega, he's training. He's getting himself in real good shape now as well. And he did make some kind of comment about um, um, about Finn not messing around anymore in this in the next movie. And uh, he also commented on um, the the fights not being so acrobatic and kind of hinted that the new ones might be, which would sort of suggest that he's going to start learning some skills. You know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd be cool with it. 
I like Finn. Finn's an awesome character. I love Finn. Mm. I was I was so happy with him when I watched the movie. I was like, yeah, man, like that guy. And yeah. on the flip side, there's some I've always wanted Ray to turn dark. And there was one particular thing. Someone, a fan, did a, a, a picture of her all dark-sided with like a double-winded lightsaber. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, that needs to happen. That would well, be so cool. Uh, sorry, I was going <laughs> to suggest that uh, next week's theory would be the theory around <laughs> Ray being um, Palpatine's granddaughter. Oh, well, that's got to happen because that, I love that theory. So I love that theory. And, and I love Save the thought one. of her going dark. So let's talk about that next week because yeah, okay. I think that can connect to why Finn may or may not be a Jedi and also the role Kylo Pull will back. play. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what do you think of this? What do you think of um, Finn um, being a, a Force-sensitive or, or actually trains to become the Jedi? What do you think is going to happen? I'd be happy either way, to be honest. I, I think I can see the story going either way, and I think either way would be good. I think it's potentially too much that they're both Force-sensitive, <laughs> but equally it would be quite cool because that could explain what drew them to get. I mean, their chemistry is amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. I mean... It, uh, and and they're both fantastic characters. I, I echo what you're saying about Finn. John Biego, he's, he's an amazing actor, and he brings so much to the role, and genuinely seems to love what he's doing. He loves it. He and, loves and Daisy it. just, you know, her smile just completely, you know, you can see that energy and enthusiasm she's got for it. Also, um, either of, you know, I've got no problem either way it goes. If I had to have a preference. I love the Jedi's. I mean, that's my favourite bit of Star Wars. So more Jedi's, more fun. That's what I say. Well, actually, I mean, it, it does look <laughs> like, you know, you, you, it could be that you're going to get a new Jedi Order. Like, it's that the Force has awakened, the Force is coming back, you know. Um, and there was a very, in those videos, again, there was another really good point. Um, it was uh, the bit where Snoke says there's been an awakening. Have you felt it? And it was our About yeah, it was before Ray, wasn't it? Yeah, and and yeah. and it is that scene where Kylo Ren is walking, and that's I love that. When I saw that in the cinema, where he's walking along and he just turns and stares at Finn, yeah. I was just like, oh my god, like that is just amazing. It was so there's something creepy about it, and it was so good the way it's done. I tell you what, <laughs> I just want to say, blast, oh man, <laughs> Force Awakens was such a brilliant film. I, I mean, I know it's had a few people moan about it, but I absolutely love it. I held it right up there with the original. It was a great introduction to the new Star Wars movies, oh, for amazing. sure. And it had some amazing. really cool stuff in there. Um, you know, I mean, for example, what I just said there about Kylo Ren, he stops that laser blast. You've yeah. never seen someone do that before. You've never no. seen that in Star Wars before. And that, I just loved it. I just lost my shit when that happened. Yeah. So. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. Alright, look, that's a uh, feel of the week. As I said, I think we've got a few ideas for maybe next week. But, again, if anyone would like to make some suggestions or submit a theory, we'd be happy to talk about those. But uh, And uh, later on, we'll put in our um, details where they can get us. Um, forceconvo uh, at gmail.com. Forceconvo at gmail.com, yep. Um, and and uh, we've also got Twitter, which is forceconvo on Twitter. And you can hashtag us with questions or suggestions if you yeah. just use the hashtag Force Convo. Um, but we'll put the details on the screen and we'll also put our details on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my next segment, Jay, I would like to present to you Star Wars Spotlight. Dun, so, dun, dun. Dun, dun. <laughs> so this is a bit what I thought... Uh, Let's talk about the things we love about Star Wars. Let's pinpoint something each week that, why do we love this brilliant bloody thing? Um, what's one of those things that got you really excited about it? So I thought I'd go first this week. And the thing that gets me, what really got me excited when I first got into Star Wars, the snow speeder. So when you saw Empire. Yeah. When I saw, well, to be honest, again, let's go back to... My origins of Star Wars. Um, my first, I was born in '76, so I didn't see Star Wars when it first came out. I, my first exposure to Star Wars was seeing the double feature of Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back with my dad at the cinema. Wow! I must have been five, possibly four or five. Excellent. I think it affected my brain in quite a strong way. I've, I don't know. I've been the same since. Blew my mind, and so. Immediately, 
you know, I, that whole thing, you know, all in one go in my brain mashed up. But the most vivid thing, I think the two most vivid things that I always remember, that I can remember from being that age, was one C-3PO, golden blimmin' head, popping <laughs> up and down at the beginning of Star Wars, and the amazing scene on Hoff, the Hoff battle scene, oh, with Cassats right. and the snow speeder. And, you know, I love the snow speeder. I particularly love it because it was also the first Star Wars toy vehicle I got. Excellent. Um, so... Do you still have and, it? No. Sold well, it, one, you? all of it was knackered. I mean, I was not a careful kid. I played with my toys. Every single bit that could be broken was broken. <laughs> Every bit that could come off was missing. I had, I had this bit of wool for the um, harpoon gun because uh, I'd lost the string <laughs> within about a day. And this rubbish bit of green wool, wool that I used to tie up my hat. <laughs> but... but what I particularly loved about the toy was it had this rubbish square button thing that you pressed and the gun things would light up and make this weird oh, rubbish yeah. noise which sounded nothing like, nothing like the movie, movie right? <laughs> but because I was knackered my toy, the actual gun things didn't stick in properly. They sort of stuck out like that. <laughs> and, and so the lights didn't even go through them. The lights just went all over. Oh, rubbish. But amazing. <laughs> Other cool thing I'd like to say about it: two people in the same ship. You didn't get that on anything else. That's better than an X-wing. That was amazing. <laughs> that was so cool. You had the two little people, dudes. You could put two cats in there. But, but they screwed you as well. They sold like a Luke figure, but not yeah. Dak. I know. What the hell? Like, well, how are you supposed to play properly? You just have to have two Lukes and pretend one of them's Dak. Is that what you did? Or you had like a Rebel soldier or something? Well, to be honest, I didn't realise for ages that the Luke figure was Luke. Because he had that little visor bit, didn't you he, coming out? Hair, didn't you? I thought it was black hair. I thought, what's going <laughs> so on with this dude? I'm thinking, who is this loser? Why has Han Solo got a costume on? <laughs> I, mean, I was like, what's going on? So, yeah, I, look, here's, um, I'll show you this. This is from, I don't know how old this is. This is really old, and it's cool. The Star Wars Technical Journal, um, Volume 3. It's got some wicked, well, not wicked, look at them, they're a bit rubs. Um, lovely information all about the snow speeder. Um, it's got a fire extinguisher in it, um, a non skid service, <laughs> targeting sensors, a tow pocket. So, did you say it's got a non skid surface? Yeah, non skid. That's what Pure you need. Pure steel armour plating. Repulsor unit housings, but you know, I think the key thing that made it stand out was that harpoon gun. You know, it's that a was a cool-looking little... ship as well. Yeah, it it looked a little bit like Buck Rogers' ship, which was the only thing slight. But again, look at this little bad boy. I've got this in the ah. Star Wars Incredible cross section. But yep. um, look nice. at that! that yeah, is... Oh, you see it all. That is totally wicked. You can see Dax. What was his name? Dax. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he feels he like he could take on the Empire all by himself, loser, but he couldn't. You know, <laughs> he got blown up straight away. What a loser. Um, Dak! Dak! Oh. But Wedge saved the day, so, as always. Wedge, the unsigned hero. Um, so, I'll give you a proper... The, the, the snow speeders, the proper name is an Incom T47 air speeder. Did you know that, Jay? I, I did not know it was an Incom T47 airspeeder. Yeah, that's what it officially is. I, I did know that it's not always used just in the snow. Yes, they're used in multiple um, environments. Uh, it was originally a civilian airspeeder and they were converted into military craft. Um, and these and those laser cannons were bolted on. They weren't in the normal configuration. That's why yours kept falling off. Yeah, we didn't bolt them on though. I bet it's that no, that bad engineers. Rubbish. Um, it's those rebel engineers, man. You probably had like a spy in base and just screwed with your shit. Well, <laughs> um, there's a uh, a lot of stuff here, all the technical stuff. To be honest, I ain't bothered about that. What I think they were just cool. They were totally cool. They and I love the toy. The at at scene is probably the best thing ever. What a great scene. What a, what an amazing scene. Um, and so I would love to see more snow speeders in the future. Well, maybe you'll see a, a new version of snow speeder in in some of the new movies. 
Or maybe oh. an adapted one on Scarif. Oh, it'd be a, a beast speeder. Beef speeder. Hovercraft. <laughs> well, they wouldn't really need them. They'd fly over the water. But mm. yeah, you might get something like that. You, you certainly, well, you're going to get the hover tanks. And they're going to be the Imperial hover tanks, of course. Well, but, like the um, ones from um, the Clone Wars? Are they adapted like those? Um, I think they well, yeah, they're going to be more, they're more modern version because they're the original trilogy. Um, mm. So you've got the hover tank pilots. Have you seen those? No, I haven't. Do you want to see one? Yes. Well, if I can reach him from here, because I've got a headset on, so I can't necessarily... I hope you're wearing trousers. I am. For once. Here you go. That, if you can see him. Oh, I have seen those bad boys at Star Wars Celebration that I went there you to. Go. Well, you saw the Scarif <laughs> Troopers at Star Wars Celebration. What are these then? These this different. is a hover tank pilot. You can see he has a very slightly different helmet on the Scarif Troopers. They've got a black uh, bit down the middle of their helmet. I think you need to pull um, him back a little bit further. He's gone a bit blurry. It's probably because of the light, actually. Um, for them like that, you can see him better there. That absolutely does nothing. So let's let's um, <laughs> let's just let's just take your word for it. That's an amazing toy. Cool. I actually, I'll just leave him here watching us um, while we do this. Um, so yeah, um, that, you're going to see those guys. Um, so there'll be Imperial hover tanks. Um, I think that if anything, if you want to see the the Rebel style snow speeder, you might see something in some of the new movies because. You know, Force Awakens did hit some of the beats of Episode 4. Um, so it's quite likely that you're going to see little things that nod to the previous movies in these new ones, and you might get your wish. Maybe even a new version of the Attack. You know, what what do the uh, First Order have? They might have something adapted, because obviously you saw the TIE Fighters. They were slightly different. They were cool. So they were very cool, and they had two people in them. They did? Mm -hmm. But yeah. was that a plot device? Oh, uh, well, that's probably why they made them like that, yeah, but... Did the um, <laughs> if you buy original the toys, TIE Fires have... Could they fit two people um, in them? I think the TIE Bombers... I probably should. I'll look in my, uh, one of my wonderful books later, and maybe yeah, I think the that could be a spot. Could. The TIE think, Bombers definitely think, do. Yeah. TIE um, Bombers that could. was it. The Incept, uh, the standard TIE Fire, and that was one person. Oh. Okay, well, look, that's my spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it. That was very um, cool. And I'm sure next week, Jay, you'll want to tell us something that you Oh, don't. yeah. Oh, any, oh, hi any hints or are you not sure yet? Not at the moment. I, I, I mean, I could go on about, you know, when I was a kid and got into Star Wars and my first toys and that kind of stuff. But I'll, I'll look at something in the Star Wars universe that I love and why I love it and what it is about that that I think is so cool. In fact, okay. I'm and, really and again, uh, if fact, anyone wants to... Be, so. Oh, you do? Good. Uh, it right. just came to me, yeah. All right. Well, and uh, as I said before, if anyone would like to make suggestions of things that they think that would we could cover in Star Wars Spotlight, you know, they could tell us why they love it, and you know, you never know, we could even get somebody on and let us tell us our story. You know. Yeah, we can have a, a, another person in the picture somehow. Yeah, I'd probably know, not knowing our system. Do that, but whatever. <laughs> But, you know, okay. if, if, um, if this show gets enough viewers, you know, maybe one day we'll all be sitting together. So that could be cool, too. Or we will have holograms. Well, that is the ultimate goal. That is the ultimate goal. <laughs> Give us YouTube so, money. YouTube right. money. <laughs> What's the next topic, dude? The next topic. Well, um, or is there done, any other topics? There is no other topics on my list apart well, from... If there's anything you want to talk about that maybe wasn't Star Wars, is there? Um, no, there, there was one other thing. Um, it was huh? Star. It was Star Wars Rebels, and without oh, giving yeah. away the spoilers, Star because reviews, just, review yeah. time, review time. Yep, we yeah, just had that. Iron Le Iron Legion, was it? Iron Squadron. Was Iron Squadron. Iron Squadron. That was the, the the most recent episode of Rebels. So obviously there will be no spoilers in here um, because some people may not have seen it yet, um, mm -hmm. but. Um, I think that you like this episode more than me, so let's let's go to you first on this one. I thought it was totally sweet okay. because um, one amazing <laughs> space battles, Star Destroyer mm -hmm. shots—they look mega cool. Okay. Two, um, the ship 
that the Iron Squadron flew around was very familiar. Um, definitely, I think it was used as by a different character in the old extended universe. Well, you can say you can say what that is. I don't. That's not a spoiler, really, because it's been in pictures. Well, you don't, don't have know. to say. You don't have, do you want to it, say? Was it? Was it? It dash random. Yes. Yeah, is that well? Yeah, it was a outrider class. It was like it was the same um, type of. Um, of ship as the as the outrider. I don't think it actually was the outrider because they never reference it by name. Um, and also, three, I really liked the character designs for the three kids that are in it. Okay. Um, I will. I know what you're going to be saying, and I will probably say the, the downside was the portrayal of one of the characters who was just very annoying. Okay. But I thought it was a fun episode and more entertaining than uh, I thought the episode before was boring. Uh, oh, with the, the Mandalorians? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was boring, nothing happened. Yeah, I have opinions on that too. And um, <laughs> what else? The the one before that wasn't that super exciting either. Yeah, it's been a weird season so far, this one. Like, it's got some really good stuff in it and it's got some not so good stuff yeah. in it too. The, the mm-hmm. good one, the highlight so far has been the episode with Wedge. Oh, I loved that episode. That was that such was a good episode. episode. That that's what I want to see because yeah. you know that's that's them actually forming the rebellion. You're like yeah. getting guys that are not feeling this empire stuff. That's what we should be seeing. Yeah, and I also like the episode with the um, battle droids. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good episode. Well, I actually <laughs> thought I was going to hate that episode, and I actually came out of it going, I enjoyed that. It was fun. Yeah, um, yeah. and the first episode of the series had a. A, a really, a, a, it was, I thought it was going to be good, but then it wasn't. <laughs> right, yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> it was a bit ago. of a letdown. What one was that? Yeah. It was when was uh, Ezra had the Sith holocron and was hiding it. Oh, and yeah. Was um, I thought he was going to go dark side and a bit more, and that was going to be pursued a bit longer. And it was dealt with really quickly and not very satisfyingly. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. what did you think of the most recent episode? Sorry, Jay. Right. Well, with this episode, oh. look. Okay, we'll go for the good stuff. There was some Thrawn in it. That's good. Yes, um, Thrawn. And, yeah, and I and look the blue beauty. I, I I don't know that I like his voice. Thrawn voice. Yeah, I I don't think it's done very well because you know obviously you imagine a voice in a certain way, but in this he sounds like he's almost falling asleep, right? When he talks, mm. that could have been better. But still, we get Thrawn. That's cool. Okay. Mm. Um, Yes, you're right. There were some nice shots of Star Destroyers. That was it for me. The yeah. rest of it, <laughs> I didn't think that it was great space battles. It was stupid having the... Like, you look, the thing is, right, I don't want the Empire to be completely bumbling all the time. There's a bunch of kids, and these, like, generals and that, they don't know what to do against them. That stuff just pisses me off, <laughs> right? <laughs> No, right? These kids, they should have just died, right? Or, <laughs> it, like, it was just, I don't know, it, it just, I was watching it and going, oh, great, here's a bunch of kids that are going to take down the Empire. TIE Fighters come at them. Yeah, that's no problem. We're kids. We can beat TIE Fighters. Yeah, great. They, it's not like they were Jedi. It's not like they had, like, four skills mm-hmm. that allowed them, like, you know, say, Anakin, okay, I can buy that because of who he is. Mm-hmm. But not with these ones. Um, so, that, that, to me, yeah, it, I was watching it going, I'm not enjoying this. I, I watch it, and I liked some stuff in there, but I didn't like the story overall. I thought it was very cool to see that type of ship. That was cool. Um, mm. Yeah, that was great. As soon as it came on screen, I was like, ah, awesome. And then I saw who was flying it and who the crew were, and I was like, not awesome. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I, I, you know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I just enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, yeah, you know, this obviously it's everyone's entitled to their opinion, and like some people like stuff, and other people don't like it. But there's certain things like that that just bug me when I'm watching something because, for me, it, you know, even if you had those kids and they were in a lot more trouble than they were, right? Mm. Like the tie fighters and stuff like that were really causing them hassle. Not like they were just flying around, cutting between them, shooting them out of the sky. Hey, we're going to blow up a, a Imperial, you know, one of the, what were they, like frigates or something they were flying there? Yeah, we're just going to blow one of those away, no problem. No. Just no. I, I didn't like that. Um, but 
th this is, um, as you say, like there were there was some cool stuff in there that was good, and ho unfortunately, the next episode's got Hondo on it, and all right, whatever. <laughs> but um, he's not the best character, is he? I, you know, the first thing that annoyed me about Hondo, right? Mm. <laughs> And, and I sound, name. basically, I sound like I hate all of this stuff, right? I don't. I like it. I do like it. I love it, right? But there are, are, are things, and they bug me. And Hondo's It's well, because you love it, you get so upset. I love it, yeah. So Hondo is a Weequay, right? Yeah. Okay. You've seen Return of the Jedi. Mm. What do their I eyes have, look I've like? seen that film. What do their eyes look like? Not like his. They have no. those blacked out eyes, right? Black First black. thing that bugs me was that right and i just didn't like him as a character i, was, I think he's stupid and uh, uh, he was rubbish in the uh, clone wars he's even rubbish, worse in rebels yeah i don't want him around uh, now there's another character feed him to sarlacc all right let's get rid of this guy um but there's actually something that i had written down um that was something that kind of tags on for Rebels as a, as a point, uh, and it was something that I wanted to ask you about, because hmm. one of the things that bugs me in Rebels, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not something that, that bugs me just in, in Rebels, it's, it's the amount of Jedi and Force users, it's, and so you've got Kanan and you've got Ezra. Yeah. Now, Ezra, so far, has done a lot more badass stuff than Luke ever did, right? Yeah, so he, why is he not the hero of the Rebellion? Also, this is set just before the Five New years Hope before, and, isn't it? Right, okay. And Luke is a New Hope, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so these guys, I'm assuming that they're going to die. And if they do, they just died. So it's not like it's like, oh, man, we've, we've been out of hope for years. We need a new one. No, no. Oh, man, we lost those Jedi. We need a new one. Don't worry, I'm here. Like, it's literally going to be like that. And... <laughs> Yeah, but right. I it, think, think just because they're Jedi doesn't mean they're necessarily a hope, though. Do you know what I mean? Because there were a lot of Jedis a long time ago. And but, I, I, I think, personally, Luke was different because he was a new hope because he's the one that was going to bring the cycle back and yeah. let, let Vader fulfil his prophecy. But do you think actually, these two will die? Do you think Kanan and Ezra are going to die? Well, I think Ezra is Snoke. Do you? Oh, I did actually think that for a while as well, and there have been some theories out there about that, which that I'd be cool with because no, Kanan's no, gonna, he can't, Kanan's he can't definitely be Snoke. Why not? Why not? Because Snoke was around to see the the Empire form and all of that. Like he was well, there. Those, well, he is there. Ezra's was there. No, but like way back during the Clone Wars, I don't think that Ezra was there. What, how do we know Snoke was there during the Clone Because Wars? It's, um, it's, it's in the book. Which right? book? In The Force Awakens. Oh, it isn't? Yeah, is it? is it not in that way he goes, I was around to see like the, the whole beginnings of the Empire and all that kind of shit? I'm sure there's yeah, a, a whole... Yeah, beginnings of the Empire. Of I don't but... think that Ezra was, was around to see He was just on Lothal. Mm -hmm. He's just like kicking around being a little baby. Yeah. Like, I mean, to be to, fair, to, he probably, to he probably isn't. all of that form and to know everything that's going on, he had to be old enough to know what was happening and to have actually witnessed it all. So, for me, I'm like, well, okay. Well, um, back to the original question. Mm -hmm. I definitely think Kanan's going to die, 100%. Yeah, Kanan, I, I think, will die. But I also thought he was going to become that old blind... Jedi from um, the uh, Force Unleashed games. Well, that's uh, who he yeah. looks like now, doesn't he? But well, I suppose they they do mix bits of all the EU in, don't they? So yeah, they could take really stuff take elements. from it. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, you, you could get that. I don't know. As in, it's just one of those things. I'm like, there's so many like Jedi kicking around still at this point. Maybe, maybe Ezra will become Vader's apprentice. Like Starkiller in the Force Unleashed games. Oh, and then be gone in time for A New Hope. And, yeah, and gone in time for Rogue One. Well, well they time, could use the Thrawn he, thing, say he's somewhere else in the galaxy the whole time. Yeah. Like, they could do that. But... I mean, I, st I still think that there's... The fact that they're not part of the same rebellion cell that we, we see in Rogue One and in, then in A no New Hope means... That they could just be in a different part of the galaxy. It's a bloody big galaxy. It is a big galaxy, but I don't know. I, I just don't. I just feel like it's like, oh, we're doing a show. We 
you've got to put some Jedi in there because otherwise no one's going to watch it. But it would and... be rubs. It would be rubs without some Jedi, to be fair. Yeah, but they I, would I, just I, get wiped okay. out by Vader. It, it, that's that's cool, but I just feel like they're a little bit too good in that case. They like they're proper badasses, and the, you know, the key the, the the thing to me is is Ahsoka dead? If she's not, again, what's going to happen to her? Because she is badass. We didn't see her die, did we? No, I think it's she she's just like it. she's somewhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we're spoiling things here. I mean, that was a first um, episode. Six that, was, weeks that was a while back, right? I mean, yeah. look, if you're watching this, then the general <laughs> rule is we won't spoil things within a week. <laughs> that's the new rule. That's and the rule. It's a new show. Actually, so that's that was the rule. rule from your Force uh, Conversations Facebook page, Jay. Oh, well, yes, that's right. In a week, really? Is yeah, you said a week. Okay. You said it's a week's <laughs> notice of anything new. That must have been a while back that I said that. Well, see, it was um, back <laughs> last year, actually. This time last year. Yeah, I just say stuff. So, yeah, you know. We've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ray, Jay, cool. Jay, I, Ray, um, I think it's probably time to wrap up that I segment. That's it. Um, Let's talk about feedback, and then I might go and see my wife. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, um, we've got a uh, email account and Twitter account for the show. So yep. you've got Force Convo at Twitter. Um, you can also message us by hashtagging Force Convo, and you can email us at forceconvo at gmail.com. And, Colin, where can people find you online? Um, I am Captain Colin on Twitter. So, at Captain Colin, if you want to talk to me there. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's probably the best place. Um, your Facebook group, I don't know if you're going to put Yeah, the, the Facebook group for this, um, well, where this, this podcast actually started. Initially, the idea was that it was going to be a video podcast, and then I just made a Facebook group for it, and now, two years later, we've decided to actually try <laughs> doing this probably quite badly but it's the first one so whatever man um but that group is forced conversations and it's on facebook so come and join up and we'd love to have you there um and yeah. uh, you're on you're on facebook are people allowed to message you on facebook no don't no? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I, if you're in the group i'll talk to you but apart from that no <laughs> and you can uh, you can add me on facebook at my name jay tank or on Twitter, you can find me at the J Tank, which is the underscore the letter J and underscore Tank. My surname T A N K. And I think that's it. So thank you very much for joining us. The most important part of this conversation are you guys. So please leave comments below. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. If you have any suggestions, anything you'd like to hear, hear us talk about, um, uh, like the like the video. Like please. the video. You know, we, we definitely want to get feedback. We want to know if you've enjoyed this. Like I say, it's brand new. We don't know. Things will probably change over the next couple of weeks as we hopefully get a bit better at this. Uh, we'll definitely take your for, you know your views into account. So yeah, leave your comments. Make sure you like us. We will us. read the comments. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully and we'll see you this time next week ish. And uh, uh, yeah, share it on all the social media as well, please, because we need your help. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure to spread the word. Tell your fellow Star Wars fans. As Jay said, this is just about having. A geeky chat about Star Wars. We love it. We just want to talk about it. So we've got no other hidden agenda. Let's talk about Star Wars, and we want you to be part of that. So and keep you. it friendly, and let's all just have a good time. Yeah. Have we got some kind of jazzy outro line, Jay, that you thought of? No, I was just going to say, until next time, may the force be with you. Classic. <laughs>